Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the day we finally get some mixed berry pie. Our mixed berry pie is going to provide that end game superb plus five, which is going to give us a huge morale boost across the board for our duplicates. In order to do that, though, we first have to tackle the liquid sulfur geyser. This here was my first attempt. It didn't go so well. All that happens is this thermo aqua tuner keeps a lot of chill in this area. Right now we have it set conservatively at about 15 degrees. The idea then is that the liquid sulfur geyser would erupt, some of the liquid would fall, it would turn to a solid, the auto super would pick it up, send it through these rails, and drop it off at our farm. For testing purposes, I dropped it off here, and at the time the sulfur was only coming out to be about 60 degrees Celsius which is not cold enough for our use case. So we're going to add on to this to fix a couple of problems. First, as soon as the liquid sulfur geyser erupts, it just lands the sulfur right here, which means the auto super can't even grab it. So we're going to smush this thing over here. And then secondly, we're going to add a whole lot of metal tiles and then send the sulfur through the metal tiles, which will hopefully give us that amount of cooling that we're looking for. Now breaking into here is not too big of a deal because it's just an oxygen atmosphere. We don't care too much about letting that oxygen out or letting the chill spread out. And because we don't have any ladders in here, we probably could use some, but for now we'll just try to get by by cutting a couple holes in the wall. We did double insulate this and the reason why is because I didn't want any of the atmosphere out here impacting the temperature in here, which would make the thermo aqua tuner's job a little bit easier, but so far that really hasn't made a big deal. I also wanted to give an update on the Atmosuit situation with some credit to Lachlan Creations. I believe they were the first one, although they weren't the only one, who recommended splitting up the Atmosuits into different banks. And so far this has worked like a charm. I did somewhat of a reorg of these pipes coming in, and long story short is we separated the Atmo suits into three banks of six, in each line taking care of one of them. Now the only somewhat dangerous part of this is if your oxygen supply and your suits get a little too low, well then you're going to be in trouble over here, because it's actually the runoff from the suits that is providing oxygen to our base. But to be honest, I don't think that's going to happen, especially for some of these back rows that just stay full of oxygen. So once again, Thanks to the comments, drumming up some more ideas that we can add to our arsenal. And if you're a newer player, feel free to throw some questions in the comments yourself. There's a lot of helpful members of the community that'd be happy to answer some questions or exchange some ideas. And we're going to move the auto sweeper over here, and that way it can pick up all the sulfur as soon as it comes out of the liquid sulfur geyser. And then we're going to put our conveyor loader down here, and then add in as many metal tiles as we can. We're also going to have to extend this cooling loop as well. That way all the metal tiles that we end up putting in have all the chill that we're looking for. And then finally I have to figure out how to fix this spaghetti of conveyor rail because it's going to snake all the way through the metal tiles and then we need to send the sulfur all the way from here to here where our future grub fruit farm is going to be. In the background I've put down a bunch of deodorizers I wanted to get rid of all the polluted oxygen, so we're starting with a nice clean slate. Additionally, we are going to go with the transit tube crossing from this side of the base over into our new agricultural area. In fact, I think we're eventually going to move all the bristle blossoms over there as well. That's definitely not a priority, but it'd be kind of handy to have all your agriculture in one spot. And then finally, we're going to have to finish it up with a nice kitchen renovation. You can see that I've already gotten rid of our old evolution chamber, and it's because we're making room for our gas range. We're going to have to scoot this electric grill over, put the natural gas range in here, and probably move around these auto sweepers a little bit. We've also simplified the rail system by adding this solid filter. Remember this main line here comes all the way down from both the poke shell farm and the slicksters. There's a mixture of poke shell molts, eggshells, and meat that comes down through this line. But that's where this beautiful solid filter comes into play. The solid filter is set to meat and so it looks at everything that goes through on this conveyor line. If it's meat, it throws it down the deep freezer. Everything else from our bristle blossoms to our sleet wheat come through on this line and end up in our deep freezer as well. We're also going to be able to reclaim all the diamond temperature shift plates that I put in here. They're not going to be needed because all of our chill is going to be being provided by those metal tiles. And then finally we can probably get rid of most of these conveyor rails because, well, 
we're going to be moving them. So it's easier to just to start with a blank slate. I'll leave this one line because we know that's where they're coming in on, but the rest, they can go away. How many dupes can you fit in one project? You just got to love when the whole team shows up and really gets to work. That's another one of the huge bonuses of having all those Atmos suits functional. At any given time, we can have 18 duplicates working on one project until, of course, one of them decides to take a break. Just go ahead and rest up, Ivy. And now for the beautiful conveyor rail run. Let's see how excessive we can make this. There we go. That looks like the right amount of excessive, huh? While the dupes are working on that, we probably need to start on the radiant liquid pipes. Now we only really need radiant liquid pipes where there's going to be metal tiles. In fact, before they get done, I think I can squeeze in one more rail if I extend it. Yeah, let's do that. This is going to give us an entire extra column worth of cooling. There we go. Now it's the perfect amount of excessive. And then we'll just have the radiant liquid pipes follow the conveyor rails. This is kind of fun. It's like tracing. We're going to separate the existing pipes as well and literally follow the conveyor rails all the way back to the input for the thermo aqua tuner. In order to conserve as much super coolant as we can, we don't want to just delete that. We'll let it run off before we destroy those pipes. First things first, we actually have to get the whole loop set up again. There we go. That's much better. The cooling loop is finished, so you can see we have to add an awful lot of super coolant. Not a big deal. So we have our little liquid pump system here, and then we'll bridge it on. I chose to put the liquid pump here because it's really close to the pipes and the power supply. With the tiles done, we can already start dropping off some beautiful super coolant. Now you might be wondering, we've been using a lot of super coolant. How much of it do we have? We're still sitting at 80 tons. 80 tons of super coolant. Now before I start all these metal tiles, I'm trying to look in here and make sure I'm not forgetting anything. It never fails with me. I always end up forgetting something. And most of the times I try to show you guys my mistakes. Some of you may wonder about that. Like, why would you show us your mistakes? Why wouldn't you just edit those out? Now, there are occasions I do cut one thing or another out of the video, but it's normally because it's just not good content. Typically, though, when I make a mistake, I like to show everyone. It serves two purposes. One, you actually get to see I'm an authentic dude and make mistakes just like everyone else. But two, there are a lot of people who think, oh, I'm never going to be very good at this game. I'm still making mistakes. Well, take it to someone who's spent way too many days of his life playing Oxygen Not Included. Those little mistakes, they happen. Don't beat yourself up about it. Because you're going to be filling up this space with aluminum metal tiles, you have to sort of plan where your last tile is going to go. That way your dupes can still get in and out. It's not that big of a deal, but for instance, I can't build these metal tiles here yet because then they'd have no way to get to these insulated tiles without me building an entire ladder run here. And I'd rather not, so we'll just work it slow, take our time, make sure we fill in all the gaps, and we should have some success. I just realized while building, we're down to 575 kilos of aluminum. We still have 27 tons of aluminum ore, but we need to get working on that aluminum refinement. Metal tiles are pretty cheap. They're only 100 kilos, but the resource cost can definitely add up. We'll go ahead and queue up 99 more aluminum, and since we're waiting on that, we can start building our farm out. Speaking of resources, because I have not been making a lot of flights to Astros to pick up some more raw minerals, we're down to 7 tons worth of granite, which granite is one of my prime building materials. We are up to 198 tons of igneous rock thanks to our lovely volcano and the magma cooling creating igneous rock but you never know when you're going to want more igneous rock to feed some hatches or something because of that i've been using a lot of mafic rock now this doesn't often happen but we're actually just going to make a box just like this and you might be wondering why we have it separated so far over here that's because of the decor penalty from the heavy watt conductive wire and the large power transformers so we wanted to keep all this away that way any dupes that are working in the farm doesn't see this negative decor we'll leave one little gap up here just so the duplicates can get in and out while we're building it but afterwards we're going to seal it up and the only way to get in and out is going to be by transit tube access another project we're working on in the colony is keeping our slickster ranch warm right now it's down to 69 degrees and the reason why is because we haven't been running the machines in our hot power plant our cold power plant's been doing all that work for us but the effect of that is the heat's dropping in here and that's where all the carbon dioxide's coming from. But lucky for us, we have some nice hot magma right here. I've got a plan that I'm instantly going to regret. And here it is. We're going to draw all the heat out of this obsidian and eventually this little bit of magma 
and inject it into our beautiful Slickster Ranch. It works pretty simple. These metal tiles absorb the heat being provided by this obsidian right here. And when the door shuts, the heat transfers from this obsidian through these metal tiles and then heats our beautiful Slickster Ranch up. Now, while I was building it, a lot of heat managed to get in here, but we need to take a look and see what the range for Slicksters are. Now, Slicksters have a comfortable range from 50 to 140 and a livable of 35 to 160. But that's not the temperatures we're actually caring the most about. If we go to the Slickster properties and look at their egg chances, their chances of laying a long hair larva egg increase whenever their body temperature is below 60 degrees. So we want to make sure it stays above 60 degrees and I'd like to keep a little bit of spare room. So we'll say if the temperature is above 80 degrees, open this door. If it's below 80 degrees, shut this door and let all the heat drain in. Simple little solution that takes zero power, providing all the heat we need for this entire area. With the exterior of our farm complete, it's time to put down our transit tube access. The rest of the farm is going to be built from the inside and we will not need outside access. It seems like I am always hunting for a spare power wire. I think for the next playthrough I'm going to put in the twin power spines. They just become really handy, especially in the late game when you have a lot of requirements. I found one. Perfect. This transformer will run this transit tube and this one here will run this transit tube and any sort of power requirements we have in our farm, which is most likely going to be conveyor loaders and auto sweepers. Something to note about your transit tubes. They actually hold a significant amount of power, 40 kilojoules to be precise. This little meter shows how much charge it has left. Now, right now, as this transit tube is charging, it was consuming 960 watts, but once it's done, charging its batteries per se there is no load now the transit tube is charging so it's consuming that 960 watts now we're not going to connect this transit tube until we're 100 percent done and sure that this is connected and working and making sure that this is closed off otherwise duplicates in suits and out of suits would start transferring back and forth and then we just have a giant headache on our hands and there they go we have duplicates outside of exosuits kind of outside our base working in a closed environment I also wanted to note that there was a comment that someone said, why don't you just take care of the entire asteroid so the dupes don't need Atmo suits to come in and out? For instance, we could vacuum this whole area out, and anytime they needed to go into a place that's really hot, you could put some Atmo suit docks. And I'd like to do that, but could you imagine having an Atmo suit dock next to every single oil well? Or like in this area, this is our infinite gold supply, and the dupes just run in here, grab it, and run out. I'm pretty sure the duplicates don't want to be in the 155 degree steam without an Atmos suit on. I only mention all that because if that is a design goal for a colony, you have to implement that from very early in your build because that'll change a lot of the design decisions that you make. In this case, we started in Rhyme. We had to insulate ourselves in and really quickly to make sure that we had crops that could grow. Still, I thought it was a decent idea, and it's one that I may use in the future. For now, though, let's get back to working on Max Paradise by throwing down some farm tiles. Now, you may remember from the last episode, we have enough sulfur to support 91 plants. These three rows here represent more than 91, so we're going to have to be careful with how much we plant and where. Up to this ladder, so not including any of these, which we'll just go ahead and cancel. This is 90 plants. Now eventually we're going to make this a sort of agricultural hub, so we might be planting our bristle blossoms in here and who knows what else. Speaking of which, it's actually time to go get some plants. And since Hulk is the most familiar, let's send him over, shall we? Hulk must be thinking, oh no, not this place again. But this time all we got to do is grab some of these spindly grub fruit plants and we'll be on our way. There's some more down here and I think it's worth the squeeze to go grab them because it'll take less time to plant our entire farm the more seeds we start with oh and look at that there's another sweetle egg too we can go grab that in addition to the sweetle eggs we're also grabbing all the grub fruit seeds okay there's four more there we're gonna get greedy let's go get them and before i forget we need to actually drop off our sweetle eggs now we're gonna let them just hatch normally so we're gonna be running spindly grub fruit for quite some time Additionally, we're going to need to put Sweetles on each of these levels. So I think we'll go one, one, and one here. And now that this automatic dispenser is complete, we can go down here to Critter Egg, select Sweetle Egg, 
make it sweep only, and then go select one Sweetle egg that we have. But lo and behold, apparently I waited too long and this Sweetle's already hatched. Well, that's perfect. We can just do a critter drop off for you, buddy. While Hulk is busy collecting seeds and critter eggs, we're still slowly building our metal tile cooling area. It's going well. I was over here getting ready to send Hulk home because we have all the eggs and seeds we need, but then Hulk's having himself a good cry. And I gotta give credit to Basher Gaming, who I'm giving the comment of the week. Well done. He says, it's gonna be okay, buddy. Sun's getting real low. Nice job, Basher. I can't believe I didn't say it myself the first time around. Our first sweet leg is being dropped off. We can go ahead and deconstruct this automatic dispenser so the next eggs will be dropped off to this level and now that we have a few seeds we can go ahead and start the planting process go over to grub fruits plant them and then copy it all the way around we want all of the grub fruits we're getting so close with our liquid sulfur tamer so i suppose now is the time to start the process of sending the rails all the way down this looks like a decent path here and we're gonna do something a little special once we get here in fact, we're going to throw it on this main line that's coming all the way from our payload opener. And then we'll add a solid filter right about here because you can't build it over ladders or anything, which really stinks. Because it needs power too. So we'll put it around here. And basically, if it's sulfur, it's going to be ejected out this way. And the beautiful Sweetle on this level has already turned one of the spindly grub fruits plants into a regular grub fruit plant. We have enough sulfur laying around that the dupes are going to manually throw sulfur in here for a little while. Not too big of a deal, but eventually we'll have our rail system in and we're going to use a system of auto sweepers and conveyor receptacles. It's not very often you get to see those. To start with though, we need to put down a bunch of auto sweepers. 11 auto sweepers ought to do it. And the way the conveyor receptacles work is we can just have the sulfur being loaded up into the receptacles and they'll back up in the receptacle. Each auto sweeper has access to one receptacle and then we just dump off a little bit of sulfur. The receptacles are really convenient because it prevents too much sulfur from being dropped off at once. The long and short of it is all the sulfur is going to come sit in the receptacle. The auto sweepers are going to provide the sulfur to the plants whenever they need it. And all this sulfur will start backing up on this rail line, which will then back up the sulfur on this rail line, allowing it to get even colder. So we're really gonna be able to dial down that temperature as much as possible. Now, truth be told, we're not gonna have too much backup because we're gonna be using just about all of the sulfur. We have 90 plants being planted and we have enough sulfur for 91. You gotta love towards the end of a project like this when you start filling in the gaps. It's like doing a puzzle and putting in the last few pieces. It's always enjoyable. I also wanted to show you the reflections. It's not often you see this many metal tiles together, but look how the light is reflecting off those tiles. Pretty cool. Now we could have made a different design decision. For instance, we could have made these tiles here insulated, which would have prevented any of the heat coming out of this liquid sulfur geyser from impacting these metal tiles. The reason why I didn't is because this thermo aqua tuner and all of the super coolant pushing through here is gonna completely override this oxygen. It's not gonna take long. And just the cycler too, since I turned the thermo aqua tuner on, it's already reduced by five degrees. And here it is, the last piece. We'll call that the keystone. And already in only just a couple of cycles, we're already down to about 31 degrees for these metal tiles. So I think we're okay to start running the sulfur through. To do that, we just select the conveyor loader, go down to miscellaneous because why wouldn't it be there? And just like that, the auto sweeper starts picking it up and throwing it in the conveyor loader. Now for reference, this sulfur is coming out at 100 degrees. It's a little warm right now because, well, we just started cooling it. But let's see what happens to it after it runs all the way through here. And here we are at the other side and the sulfur is still a little warm. And I suspect it's because this hasn't really had an opportunity to chill down. So for right now, we're not gonna allow any more sulfur to go through. But we will get to see this in action and see how the conveyor receptacles work and get some of our first few plants fed. Remember, it's taking the long trip all the way down here, all the way through here, where it comes down here to this solid filter. These eggshells passed right through, but any sulfur gets sent down to our farm. And that trip goes all the way across here and then ends up into these receptacles. And we set these rails up very specifically. By having just normal T-junctions here, it actually spits the sulfur off. Now this first line will get a little bit more sulfur than these second two lines, but after these receptacles get enough, it's not really gonna matter because it's gonna start backing up like it does here. Now each receptacle can hold 100 kilos worth of material. 
but these rails are going to be moving pretty constantly because 100 kilos worth of sulfur is only 10 plants. So that rail is going to continuously move. It might back up a little bit, but that's to our advantage. And this one little Sweetle has done a great job. Sweetle tending these spindly grub fruits, turning them into grub fruits, which means we already have some grub fruit harvest. Notice up here where that sweetle was just born and is still getting to work, we still have some spindly grub fruits. Spindly grub fruits aren't really going to do us any good, but now we have to get all the fruit out of here. That's where our friend the conveyor loader comes into place. I just realized these auto sweepers may not be close enough. This auto sweeper I don't believe can get the materials out of here, which means we need to bump all of these auto sweepers over just a smidge. In fact, for the amount of coverage that we need, we're just going to need to add some more conveyor receptacles. Additionally, I failed to put some overlap here, and that way they could share one conveyor loader. Okay, after a fair bit of moving things around, we've got everything sorted. Now every auto sweeper has access to their own conveyor receptacle, and both auto sweepers can see the conveyor loader. Now we need to get all of the fruit out. Our closest line is right here, which is pretty convenient. So I think we're just going to add on to it like this and then bring it up and connect it with some bridges then we tell the conveyor loaders to grab all of the grub fruit and the spindly grub fruit with sulfur delivery and the farm complete now it's time to reorganize our kitchen the difficult thing when you're working with a electric grill and a gas range is everything needs access to your wonderful deep freezer i think we can make that happen but first is we're gonna have to raise this auto sweeper and see if we can get both the gas range and the electric grill within range. Now we know we're gonna need a source of natural gas. Luckily, we have one from our main natural gas line and it's being fed by three oil wells. So I'm not really worried about running out of natural gas for our kitchen. So in the interest of that overflow, let's make sure that we add plenty of pipe run as sort of a temporary storage of the natural gas before it heads up into the grill. Well, I think we've managed to squeeze everything in. The moment of truth is whether or not the auto sweepers can do what they need to do. Having the auto sweeper there would have been great, but unfortunately it cannot reach. But it can from here. Okay, I think we can work with this. We need one auto sweeper that's able to grab things out of the deep freezer and it be in position to where it can feed both the gas range and the electric grill. Then we need another auto sweeper that takes all the completed food products and puts it into a conveyor loader that sends it back into the deep freezer. And then finally, this auto sweeper will grab the food out of the deep freezer and throw it in our refrigerator. But an important note is that the auto sweeper that's responsible for pulling the food out of the deep freezer can't have access to this conveyor loader here. And in this position, it does. Because otherwise, it would become an infinite loop where the auto sweeper would keep grabbing the food, putting it back in the conveyor loader, and around and around we go. So what we're gonna actually going to have to do is move this conveyor loader over one, which is really going to mess with the feng sway we have going, but you got to do what you got to do. All right, after a lot of playing around, I think I have a configuration that works. This auto sweeper can hit the deep freezer and both the gas range and the electric grill. This auto sweeper can't see the deep freezer, but can hit all the foods that come out and this conveyor loader. Well, almost perfect. This light is off-centered, and it's killing me. And unfortunately, I can't move this over, because then I'd have to move the conveyor chute over, and then it'd be out of range for this auto sweeper. So this light is just going to have to be sort of like a corner light. But the grill and the gas range are both independently connected to their own lights, so when a duplicate's standing there, they're going to get the well-lit buff, causing them to cook even faster. And that's the great thing, too, about having two cooks. We can have one on the grill and one on the range at all times. So now, let's go ahead and set up what kind of foods we're going to be eating. We know we're going with mixed berry pie, so we need to set that on forever. Now the mixed berry pie requires gristle berry, so we know the electric grill needs to be cooking gristle berries for all the time. And since we know that we're going to be using those at the minimum, we can select gristle berries and mixed berry pies, and they'll automatically be thrown into our conveyor loader, which will then end up in our deep freezer. Alright, perfect. Mixed berry pies, done. Well, almost done. We need to make sure that the refrigerator can stock mixed berry pies. I accidentally had the electric grill disabled by the automation grid. Wonderful. We'll just hook it around just like that. We also know that we're going to be cooking barbecue because we have meat coming in. So we need to tell the electric grill to cook all the barbecue. It goes on forever. 
and then we tell the conveyor loader, make sure you send all the barbecue to the deep freezer. Back to the refrigerator so we can tell it to store barbecue so the duplicates can get to it to eat. And that's it. Because we're running mixed berry pies, we're not going to be running frost buns, at least for now. We'll see how the food comes out. We may have much more sleet wheat than just for mixed berry pies. So then at that point, we might as well cook some more frost buns, but we'll wait and see. What I'd really like to get going are frost burgers, which would use up the barbecue, and we could use that sleet wheat for the frost buns, but unfortunately, lettuce is still a pain in the butt. Lettuce comes from the waterweed plant. The waterweed plant requires bleach stone. And in order to get bleach stone going, you'd have to start running puffs and everything else, and I'm not sure if that juice is worth the squeeze. The last thing we have to do is turn our sulfur supply back on. We've got the area down between 0 and 2 degrees. Back to miscellaneous, select the sulfur, and let's see how it does this time. Alright, now we have some progress. The sulfur's coming out of the system at 24 degrees, and going into it at 102. I'll take an 80 degree drop. That works out just fine. Well, there you have it. From farm to kitchen, we've got mixed berry pies. I'm not sure what's next for the colony, but I am happy that we finally started cooking some endgame food. Would you like to see us go nuclear first? Or perhaps to go get the thermium? Maybe we build the dupe condos next? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I had a great time cooking this episode up. I hope you did too. Yeah, I just said that, and I'll talk to you soon.